Good morning, my walking friends, or how are we doing today? I hope this beautiful day finds you guys doing excellent and amazing and wonderful. So today I thought I would do something a little bit different. Today we're actually going to delve into a true crime story that just <clears throat> turned into a rabbit hole of information. The more research I did on it, the more I delved into it. I would like to say I did my research off the ACMA Herald Republic and the FBI website. So I would like to thank those guys for their excellent journalistic and reporting techniques. But let's get started because this is a really long one. Today we're talking about the unsolved murders on the Yakima Indian Nation. And of course I have my notes because it's a long one. So let's get started, shall we? The Yakima Indian Nation is 1.3 million acres big. It was given to the Yakima people after, of course, the Americans, or the, well, I guess you could say the Americans took over the United States. So, let's get started with the cases, shall we? Rosinda Strong, case number 18-010803. Rosinda Strong disappeared on October 2nd after getting a ride from her home in Wapato, Washington to a local casino. Her remains were found in an abandoned freezer on July 4th, 2014 in Toppenish, Washington. The freezer was left in an illegal dumping ground. She was identified by dental records. Strong's sister, Sissy, Sissy Strong Reyes, organized a memorial on July 4th of 2020. Reyes told the local newspaper that, quote, we still have missing brothers and sisters. I will not be quiet, end quote. Her death has been classified as a homicide, but her cause, cause of death remains under investigation. Angela Marie Heath, which is being investigated by Washington State Patrol, was struck and killed at the intersection of I-97 and South Wapato Road around 11.30 p.m. on April 5th. 2019. The driver of the vehicle that struck her has never been found. <clears throat> Destiny Louise Lloyd, investigated by the Yakima Nation Police and the FBI. Her body was found on December 29th, 2017, after going missing on December 25th, 2017. She was found near the Hera Road South in Hera. She died of a basal skull fracture, according to her autopsy. It is unclear exactly how long Lloyd was deceased. At the time of her death, her Facebook page said that she was a child care worker at the local casino. Echo Little Wolf. Echo's remains were found by her mother in a field that Little Wolf was camping in. Though the Yakima County Coroner's Office ruled her death as natural due to cardiac issues, her mother feels that her death is not natural. It had been hot the days before, so at first investigators could not tell her gender. Her mother was the one that found her, and when she got to the field, she said that she could smell the smell of death, and that's how she knew that her daughter had passed away. I can't even begin to fathom being the mother and finding your own child deceased. Many Rainbow Andy, investigated by the FBI. She was assaulted in July of 2017 and suffered blunt force trauma to her head and chest. <clears throat> uh, 
a 31 to 40 year old male was indicted in September of 2017, but was later released after the indictment was dismissed without prejudice. If more evidence is presented, charges can be filed again. Linda Davey, investigated by the FBI. Her body was found in February 15th, 2017 under a bridge on Highway 97 near Toppenish. She died of a gunshot wound to her abdomen. Her body was identified in March 2018. She was 38 years old at the time of her death. Her body was found by employees of Washington State Department of Transportation. They had to be identified by DNA that was sent to the Washington State Crime Lab. The coroner stated her body was in the water for about six weeks before she was found. The FBI is currently investigating this case. At the end of this video, I will give you the phone number and the website to where if you know any of the, any information on these cases, you can contact these agencies so you can report them. Please, if you know anything, please contact these agencies. <clears throat> Naoma Alexandra George. She was the mother of eight children and she was found in the early morning in an alley beaten to death in Wapato. She was found on October 15, 2013. No other information is known. Barbara Celestine. She was found dead in a house in the Appas Gowdy Housing Project in Wapato, Washington. She was killed September 5, 2005 from blunt force trauma to her head. <clears throat> Charmaine Sanchi. Yakima County Sheriff's Office. She was a 47-year-old woman who was found with two other victims, Tony Green, a 43-year-old female, and Stephen Alvarado, a 52-year-old male. They were all found in a small trailer outside of Toppenish. They were all stabbed and beaten to death. On January 16, 2003, Arthur Joseph Sanchi, Charmaine's brother, was originally charged, but then was acquitted in 2004. Sanchi was interrogated where he claimed that he killed Stephen Alvarado in self-defense, but he didn't kill the women. He admitted during his trial that he was constantly drunk and high on cocaine. Detectives testified that they couldn't prove Sanchi's claim he killed Alvarado because they didn't record it. The defense suggested it was a coerced false confession, saying the detectives tried to trick Sanchi by saying they found his bloody fingerprints at the scene. There was no evidence linking Sanchi to the crime. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Alice Ida Looney, investigated by the FBI. She was reported missing on August 16, 2004. Her body was found by a hunter. Or hunters. It wasn't specifically clear if it was one hunter or a group of hunters on a small island wedged under a tree in Sadus Creek, 12 miles south of Toppenish. She went missing August 2004 and her skeleton remains were found November 30th, 2005. She was the youngest of 11 children born to Eva and Wilkins Looney Sr. She enjoyed taking care of her nieces and nephews, though she never had her own kids. She would check in with them when they were older, more than their own parents did. 
She enjoyed fishing on the Columbia River. Her mother had taught her to do so. A family friend would later say, quote, she was very soft-spoken. She didn't have a hostile bone in her body. She was very sensitive, end quote. She would disappear for weeks at a time, but would come back. And during this time, she would hitchhike to and from Goldendale. She was in an on and off relationship with a male and he spent, and she spent her time living with him or family. On August 16th, 2004, Mary and her husband last saw her at the local casino and she wanted a ride to Wapato. So Mary drove her to Wapato and dropped her off at a local convenience store. With only $20 in her pocket, her last words to Mary were, quote, I love you, end quote, before they left. Friends later said they saw Alice with a man at a house on Mama Chat Lane in Wapato shortly after she was dropped off. Other sightings include seeing Alice with the same man at a bar in Wampato, where it was rumored she got into a fight with drug dealers. <clears throat> it was said that she was seen walking along track road. It was said by Alice that she and a friend were going to go into treatment for addiction. So her sisters checked hospitals and treatment centers and her family also called Warm Springs and Nez Perce tribes. Family members posted missing person flyers and walked along track road to, quote, grasp at straws, end quote. The FBI currently has her case, though the county elected coroner ruled her death as undetermined pending further study. The newly elected county coroner states, it, quote, it can be changed to homicide if more evidence or information surfaces, end quote even though her skeletal remains had to be identified by dental records and steel braces attached to the upper leg bones due to a car accident in 1904. Quote, there were definitely suspicious circumstances, end quote, said the current county coroner. He stated this due to the location of the body and the neck fracture that may be due to strangulation. Apparently, they had a forensic pathologist come and check out her bones, and he found that her hyoid bone had fractures on the side, but they can't actually say that <clears throat> it's due to strangulation or if it's caused from another reason. So, if you have any ideas about this case, or if you know of anybody who may have seen her during her last days please contact the fbi sherry d sampson elwell her sexually mutilated body was found december 30th 1992 northwest of white swan by a group of hunters it was on the yakima reservation in a closed and very remote area her family stated they had not seen her for weeks. An autopsy report showed that she died from strangulation. Roselia Lou Tuli, so happy. Her partially dressed body was found in a remote ravine along the south slope of Atanum Ridge, just north of Brownstone on March 13, 1989. Autopsy showed that she had been strangled. She was last seen on December 31st, 1988. Joanne Betty Wyman John. Skull and bone fragments were found February 2nd, 1991 that were later identified by dental records as Joanne John. The remains were found
sorry. So sorry. Near Mill Creek, southwest of White Swan. She was a mother of 11 as was last seen at a tavern in Brownstone. Her official cause of death is listed as homicidal violence. Parker Doe. Case number 88-1113. Yakima County Sheriff's Office. Skeletal remains of an unidentified Native American woman around 20 to 30 years old was found February 16, 1988 near Parker Dam in Washington. Though no cause of death has been determined, the Yakima County Sheriff's Office considers the death as a homicide and is working with the coroner to exhume her remains for possible identifications. They determined she disappeared in 1987. She was five feet tall, brown hair, brown eyes, and wore long sleeve brows, lavender pants, and brown bowling shoes. Janice Marie Wilson. Vanished August 4th, 1987 and found August 8th, 1987, partially dressed in a remote area near Cherry Hill. Cause of death was from a severe blow to the head. She was last seen and she was leaving a party near Granger and decided to hitchhike to Sunnyside. Samuel Posada of Hermiston, Oregon was arrested in 2009 but was later acquitted in late 2011 due to insufficient evidence. <clears throat> no one knows how many Yakima citizens have gone missing and have been murdered or have mysteriously died. If you know any information about any of these cases, please call the Yakima Nation Police at 509-865-2933, the FBI at 509-865. 9900857 or you can email or message uh, go online to their website at www.tips that's t i p s f b i .gov g o v that's www.tips f b i .gov the Yakima County Sheriff's Office at 509-574-2500 or if you're out of state, it, there's a 1-800 number of 1-800-572-0490. Friends, There are a lot of mysterious disappearances and unsolved homicides on the Yakima Indian Nation Reservation. I don't know if there's a serial killer going around or if it's just individual circumstances. You just don't know. But if you know any information, please call them. They need to solve these cases for the family members. And can you imagine being a member of a family where your loved one was murdered and you don't know who did it, why they did it, or if they could come after you and the rest of your family? That's why it is so important to find out who did these awful crimes. Please don't call in any conspiracy theories or any bogus tips. The FBI, the Sheriff's Department, and the Yakima Nation investigate all tips that are called in. So if you think you have a conspiracy theory about why these women have died, please don't call them in. Call them in if they're factual tips and you know for a fact, or if you've heard something if you've heard who specifically could have done this, call that in as well. 
but please don't call in bogus tips. It just takes time and resources away from the cases and any new cases that may pop up. I am deeply saddened for these women and I find it just completely horrified and horrific that this tribe is having to go through this, having to lose their women that have children and families that love them. It just horrifies me. And I think what's the worst part about it is a lot of people just hear about it and turn a blind eye to it because it happens on the reservation. And a lot of people don't care what happens on the reservation, which is disgusting and saddening. We should all care about human life. We should all care about what happens. So if you could possibly help with finding out what happened to these women, or if you've heard somebody gossiping or bragging about it at a party even, that they know who did it, or that they did it, please call it in. If they're bragging about it, then that's information that the FBI and that the tribal police and the sheriff's office needs to know. When it comes to hit and run accidents, if you know who did that and they were so scared to come forward, please urge them to come forward. That poor lady has a family and there were two actual unsolved homicides of people one was found in the river, remember? She had blood force trauma. She could have been hit by a car and gone over the river, uh, gone over the bridge or be thrown over the bridge, hoping that nobody would find her. <clears throat> but these cases need to be solved. <clears throat> when I was doing the research for this, there was just a rabbit hole of information. Each case led to a different article, and each article led to more resources. And if I was able to find out who the agency is that's working on these crimes, that's great, but a lot of them didn't list it, and I'm sorry for that. I think that you could probably, if there's no agency listed, you could still contact the FBI because honestly, the FBI is and the Yakima Nation are the two forces that <clears throat> protect the Yakima Nation. And they're the ones, so sorry. They're the ones that guard and protect the Yakima Indian Nation. I know I just said that I lost my train of thought. And they're the ones that investigate crimes on tribal land because tribal land, you can't just have like a regular Yakima police office come or Yakima police department come out there and investigate. That's not how it works. I know that Part of the reservation leeches into, leeches is such a bad word, but overlaps. There we go. They overlap into Yakima, but Yakima Police Department can't really investigate tribal land. They have to contact Yakima Nation Tribal Police, and if they run out of leads, they end up calling the FBI. Because you got to remember, the FBI can't get involved unless they're invited in by an agency. And I'm not sure really if that's the case when it comes to tribal land. Because I know that the FBI has jurisdiction on tribal land, so I'm not sure if that means that they have to be invited into the case or not. 
I guess if if one of you guys knows the answer to that, could you please leave it in the comments below? I would really be interested in knowing that. I suppose I could do the research myself. Um, next cases we're going to talk about for the true crime section is the missing persons. And I'll actually discuss some of the solved cases that have come out of the Yakima Nation tribe. Because there are a few cases that are solved. I believe there's like three to five that are solved. So that, that feels hopeful. That feels like maybe we'll be able to solve these cases with Rosinda Strong and Ida Lewis and all these other cases. Hopefully we'll be able to find out more. Um, I feel really sorry and really bad for the families of the victims, especially the children. Can you imagine your mom just decides that she's gonna go out to the local casino for the night and all of a sudden she doesn't come home and nobody knows what's going on and her remains are found locked in a freezer years to a, a month, months to a year later that's horrifying. That's absolutely horrifying. And it's just, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart for these families. I really feel so bad for these family members. And I'm hoping that we can find some resolutions to all these and solve them. I'm hoping that the county coroner's office will delve into some of these cases and like Echo Littlewolf's case, the coroner, which I know him personally, he's a great guy, he really honestly is, but he listed her death as, as a cardiac episode, yet there was no autopsy performed. If there's no autopsy performed, you don't know what the cause of death is. And the mother strongly feels that the reason why they didn't do an autopsy was because the daughter was living in a tent and a camping site. And because I do believe she had problems with drugs and alcohol in the past. Um, if I'm wrong about that, I apologize. But I think I read that somewhere. And she was struggling. The daughter was struggling. But to find your daughter like that by yourself, that's horrifying. And then to notice that all of her precious belongings are gone, like her purse. She took her purse everywhere, I guess. And her purse was missing. Her jewelry was missing. Um, some of her clothes were missing. That doesn't say natural causes to me. To me, that says that there was something more maniacal behind it, something more um, that needs to be investigated into more. And I'm hoping that the mother can get the case reopened and it would be nice if they could do an autopsy on the daughter now, but I don't know if they just buried her or if they cremated. I don't think Native Americans cremate their loved ones. I think they bury them. So if they could exhume her body and do an actual autopsy to try to figure out her cause of death, I think that would bring some solace to the family members. So, but that is our true crime segment for today. So let's do a check-in. How are we doing? I got all my miles in over the last couple days. How did you do? Did you do well? Um, I met a new friend. She's a very nice lady. It's always nice to meet new friends. I think I might be able to get her to go walking with me some evenings, but that's to be determined. Um, how are you doing mentally? Are you doing well? 
I know mentally with COVID cases on the uprise again, it can be very depressing. But I want you to know that we're trying to fight this together. Get vaccinated. Definitely get vaccinated. If you don't believe in the vaccinations, please do the research behind it. I got vaccinated. I didn't turn magnetic. There's no tracking chip in my body. That needle is so tiny, there's no possible way you could put a tracking chip in it. No matter how great technology is today, the needle gauge would have to be extremely bigger to put a tracking chip in somebody. And as far as these stories that are going around on TikTok, that if you get the vaccine, you turn magnetic, well, that's just not the case either. Nothing sticks to me. Um, but get vaccinated, please. Let's stop this pandemic in its tracks. The only way to stop this pandemic in its tracks is if we're all vaccinated and if we're practicing social distancing and wearing our masks and we ride out this next surge of COVID that's come along. I have a very near and dear friend right that has COVID right now and she is sick as a dog and she wasn't vaccinated and she wishes that she was because she knows that if she were to have been vaccinated and still caught COVID that the symptoms wouldn't be nearly as bad as what they are right now. They did tell her if she doesn't get better in a timely manner, they may have to admit her into the hospital. And it's a scary thing to think about. She's very near and dear to me. So shout out to Crystal. Um, but yeah, just take care of yourself do what's best for you but think about your health and think about others around you I know a lot of people won't get vaccinated because they think that we're just all sheep those of us that got vaccinated but if we're all sheep at least we're sheep that aren't getting sick you know what I mean so please think about getting vaccinated in fact I'm wearing my my shirt that my mom got me today, it says spread kindness, not germs. And it's got a giraffe with a face mask on it. I love giraffes for those of you that don't know. I think they're the most beautiful animals in the world. So she found this shirt and she bought it for me. So I definitely spread kindness and I don't spread germs. But yeah, please take care of yourself. Please, please. And if you have not yet been vaccinated, please go get vaccinated. It's the best way to stop this cold in its tracks. I would hate for you to injure yourself in some other manner. Like my mom just recently broke her hand and she had to go to the emergency room and everybody in the emergency room was sick and she was there for a broken hand. She ended up leaving because they kept taking the sick patients back before her, which is understandable. It's understandable that they would take deathly ill patients back before her, but she was in the waiting room from, I think, 6.30 until 11.30, surrounded by all that sickness. So please just think about getting vaccinated. It's what's best for you. It's what's best for the people around you. So that's my soapbox for the day. And I think we will end this video right where we stand again. Um, if you have any information on the cases that I discussed today, please call. Yakima Nation Police at 509-865-2933. The FBI at 509-990-0857. Or you can message them on the internet at www.tips.com. 
that's fbi.gov, G-O-V. So that's www.tips.fbi.gov. Or you can call the Yakima County Sheriff's Department at 509-574-2500. Or the 1-800 number is 1-800-572-0490. And I believe that you can be kept anonymous if you don't want anybody to know that it was you that called in the, the information. I believe that there's a way to stay anonymous. So just keep that in mind. But you go have a great and wonderful next two days, today and tomorrow. And I will see you on Thursday. Bye.